Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Sabadika. Thank you. Well, good morning um, to all my friends uh, in Thailand and all over the world. And, and thank you for your patience. And, and I know that a lot of people are trying to get on and just, you know, that's why I think we hope we learn from this as part of our business. We always have to do rehearsal. Okay. So um, anyway, I'm glad that I'm back on and uh, I have always been on and this is the key. I was always ready. Um, so we encountered some technical difficulties, but I want to thank you all for your patience. I know that, you know, we are dealing with different time zone, um, but with technology, uh, we're all here. And so I'm grateful. And Lynn, thank you for having me on, on this call tonight. Uh, or it's Sunday evening here in Los Angeles. And so um, uh, for those of, you, th those of you that do not know me or have not met me, uh, my name is Kim. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I started Jeunesse about nine years ago um, today. Yeah, almost nine years ago um, in my kitchen table, uh, not at this home, another home. And so it, it has been an incredible journey nine years ago. I still recall that nine years as if it was yesterday. You know, the, there's five, total five of us around my round kitchen table. And uh, we all had a dream of becoming successful in life and doing something with our lives. And so uh, I tell you, from that nine years ago until now, it has been an incredible, incredible journey. And uh, with that, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, my first trip uh, for Jeunesse in Thailand, uh, those humble beginnings, uh, I remember doing a meeting at Tanette's house uh, with a group of entrepreneurs. They were so excited. And look at what you guys have right here now in Thailand, and for that matter, throughout the world. And so I think, you know, to make the call more effective, Lynn, um, let's do maybe perhaps you can be a host and ask me questions. That way we can make it more meaningful to our callers because I know some of the call right now it's morning time in Thailand, but is it may be evening time and midnight somewhere uh, in different parts of the world. So let's make it more effective and, and, and uh, perhaps let's do it that way. Is that all right? Yes, yes. So uh, you want me to ask the question and you can answer all along the uh, interview and the, the talking, right? Sure, sure. You know, I, I'm here. I mean, I, you know, we all take time for this. So I'm here for all of you. And so uh, uh, let's, let's get it going. So yeah, please. And uh, my question is, uh, how can you uh, build your strong team and how can you begin with a, such a very uh, strong way to come all the way to be a presidential diamond? So what is your step all along? And what is the <laughs> beginning to hear? Yeah. So, I see. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> I got to write a book about this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it all start you know how strong or i think ultimately it has to start with yourself um now this journey it can be a one person gig and as i look back to my journey of the last nine years of where how we started to where we are here today um, ultimately i think the number one thing is that we have to find our core partners um, as I look back, I'm very blessed from day one. I have four other people that believed in me. I have four other people that have the shared vision of wanting to do something with our lives and that share the same work ethics. And so, you know, no matter how great an opportunity or how hardworking of a person you are, um, it will be a very challenging ride until you find those core people because this business is not a long person business. It's with a group of people. And so I would say that as an entrepreneur in this platform, the number one thing is to find your uh, core, I would say find your core five or six people to start working the business. And, and this is the key. It sounds so easy to find a, a, a few people uh, that share the same vision. Um, but, but the magic of that is, is that don't stop until you find your core. Now, I started with four other friends in Los Angeles, and, and because of that, they introduced, to, they introduced me to some people in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, then in Indonesia, 
And every country, as I look back nine years ago, that the group became so strong is that those leaders in those respective countries, they all started with a handful of people. I remember Hong Kong started with four people. Uh, uh, so uh, in Taiwan, it started with four or five people. And so that's the magic. You got to find a group of people that that want the same thing and that that are willing to do the same thing. And so it, it sounds really simple, but the hardest part is that, you know, most people, before they even find the first one, um, then they stop working. So I, I think the strength, um, and then the other thing getting, getting back to you is that the strength has to come from within. Um, you know, it, it is easy to say to find those four or five or six people, but it's another thing when you can't seem to find those people yet. And so um, I knew what I wanted and I had, I was able to leverage the people around me. Um, there, there is, it, I would say this, Lynn, um, and I'm sure you have built a pretty massive organization yourself as well. That strength comes in with the people around you. Um, now, if you haven't found the right one, don't give up. Um, there's got to be something deep inside you that want to do something. I, I, you know, as I look back, if I were to look at, as I look back, if, if I were to um, identify that something, you know, it wasn't business. It was, it was the ability to listen to my heart and the ability to listen to your heart. It, it is there. So I, I hope that, you know, sometimes we, we've gone this long journey of nine years. Um, you know, some of the things we talk about for a new beginner, it may or may not make sense. But I hope that I'm making a little bit of sense to, to you. To, I mean, to you, I'm sure it does, but to our audiences. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope I answer your question. That is very, very nice question. Uh, and it's very nice answer. Anyway, uh, I also want to ask you more about when uh, a lot of people, they are uh, doing a very good job at the beginning, but in the wrong run, when they face some trouble, uh, they, they, they tend to stop or they, they tend to be, uh, you know, give up. So uh, what, what do you think that, uh, uh, how do we keep people, how do we keep them not to give up on this uh, business? Hmm. Well, that, that is a loaded <laughs> question, Lynn. Um, how do we keep people from giving up? We can't. We mm -hmm. cannot. I mean, I, I wish there's a, a better way of answering it. We, how do we keep people from giving up? Ultimately, that control of wanting to pursue something that's within that person. We can't control people. I, I can't, you know, make them not give up. Ultimately, it is that, in, that right to pursue or to let go, to give up is within that individual. Um, however, the things that we can do as a friend, as a sponsor, as an upline, is to encourage them to plug in. Now, what do I mean by plugging in? Um, I hope it's not too discouraging about we can't stop people from quitting, okay? People do quit. But what, you know, we all go through those days that there are days that we wanted to quit. There are those that we don't feel like doing something. Um, so that is just human nature. But how do we encourage people to go forward? Um, I would attribute a lot of that to the events, to meetings and to events and to gathering. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Um, an event such as today, the conference call, minus the technical difficulties. But, you know, sometimes with these kind of gathering, it is not too much of what was said, but rather it is the, the, the camaraderie, the getting together, just as we as humans of coming together, listening to one another's story. They feel, you know what, I am okay. You know, it is, it is okay to go through challenges. It is okay for things not on a smooth sail. So when they feel like, you know what, I am not alone. I, I think that is one of the most thing we can do as a sponsor is to, or, or as a quote unquote leader is to encourage them to plug into events. Um, what is an event? Anything is an event, a conference call as such. It is an event. We have upcoming in September, the expo in Bangkok. 
that is a huge event. Um, so when when the team start plugging into these these events, anything that promotes positive energy, anything that promotes learning, anything that promotes that inspire people, uh, that is, those are the events to plug into. And so the, ex, the upcoming Expo in Thailand, I, I am thrilled and I'm excited to be a part of it in September. And so I, I think when you get people to participate in, in these events, um, that is another, that's one of the glues to glue people um, uh, into something that hopefully will inspire them, uh, not only in terms of knowledge, but in just it, it's not much of what was said, but it is just that 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 surrounding, that feeling of energy, the camaraderie. So I I would say that what's encouraging, what would help encourage the team uh, would be to participate and to to join, to plug in to the events. You know, I'm sure in Thailand you guys have. You know, local meetings, you have Zoom conference calls, you have all these stuff. That is what um, I would say if I look back to my 20 years of uh, uh, being in this industry, if there's one thing that I, I've done well is I've done well in promoting events and participating in the events. Very good answer. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, right now, I have somebody that uh, maybe they think that they have a, a choice. Okay. So uh, when they will want to join some MLM, then uh, they have a choice that which company should they join. So what makes uh, Jeunesse different from other, other company and what uh, we should recommend Jeunesse, what is our difference? What is our uh, uh, point uh, to, to be a great business? Yeah. I see. Well, I, I don't know what companies they're looking at, so I cannot comment on other companies. But what I could talk about uh, why Jeunesse is I think our track record speaks for itself. Uh, the, the, the lives that we're able to touch and, and, and changed. Uh, I think speaks for itself, our track record. And so uh, as far as, I, I, you know, I've ne I never like to compare other opportunity or other company with ours, because I think I believe every opportunity, they are unique in their own ways. Um, it's like choosing a, a partner, you know, why you, we choose our spouse, why they choose certain spouses. So th there's a thing for different people. Um, but as far as I, what I can speak about, uh, about Jeunesse is that, I mean, look, I mean, look at me. I'm a housewife, okay? I started this business nine years ago. Um, I could tell you this, I feel healthier. Uh, I am happier. Uh, I am, I do financial a lot better uh, than I was nine years ago. And uh, not only me, but people like yourself in Thailand. I mean, all over, I mean, look at all the people that's on, on the chat all over the world that lives are being changed. So I, I think that speaks for itself. But as far as, far as a trend standpoint, um, I mean, Jeunesse, I, I think, had come to a point of where society, humanity, technology, is like a convergence all coming together um, that we were able to provide a platform that, that were able to connect lives from all over. And thanks to the internet, really, and social media, it, it has created this, this um, timing of readiness for all of us to participate. Well, for those who choose to participate, um, Jeunesse is a ph phenomenal product, an incredible business platform, and an incredible track record to show. Um, for those of people that are looking for a solid business opportunity, um, after nine years, we have worked out a lot of kinks. You know, we're not perfect yet. But we have we have worked out a lot of stuff. If you know, I, I still recall nine years ago there were some of the stuff that we had to deal with, but we no longer have to deal with that. So for people that are looking for um, a ship that's ready to take off, you know, get ready for an incredible ride. I mean, Jeunesse, I you know, I, I hope Lynn, I um I, I it might not be the answer most people look for, but you know. Ultimately, it is here. We all know, we all can feel, not know, we all can feel that if this is the right thing for us. And so um, ultimately, it's the people that um, 
people resonate with you. And so, I mean, like yourself, I read your story, Lynn, a quite incredible story that you have from a super wealthy family, uh, quite successful architect. And you went, went on this journey and you become a just successful diamond. I mean, that in itself, why you choose Janess? I mean, the same thing, you know, why people from all over the world uh, that are joining this platform. So I, I don't think there's anything that we could put an exact precise word to describe that, but it is beyond words that's felt right here. I, I hope I'm making sense. So yeah. Yes, that's very make, makes a lot of sense. And yes, you were you were the same. I also choose Jeunesse because Jeunesse is different. But I would love to hear your point of view, though. So uh, it's a very good uh, answer for yourself. Yes. Well, well, I could also share with you nine years ago, uh, when Wendy and Randy uh, flew to Los Angeles uh, to have lunch, and they were talking about Jeunesse. And so what you know, so. Now, I want you to think about this. Nine years ago, there was the product that there wasn't even any packaging yet. Um, so doing the uh, doing lunch at our lunch table, um, you know, Randy was talking about, you know, and, and Wendy were talking about this idea of launching Jeunesse, uh, an anti-aging company um, that helped to want to help people change their lives. Um, you know, now think about this. If you were to ask me, well, Kim, why I chose Jeunesse, it wasn't at that time it wasn't a very concrete, say, reserve, because reserve is unknown at that time. It wasn't numinous because it, it was not a known item. But what it was, it was something about Wendy and Randy at that time that I felt that I resonate with. Um, so that was the first step, that I, I trust them uh, and I resonated with them. So that was number one thing. Then the second thing was the technology that they were talking about the um the adult stem cell technology that and and resver resveratrol how it was in the forefront of medicine back then um my husband who's a medical doctor later on had research about those topics and he goes you know what that is it you need to get involved in something like that now it, it was a combination of different angles it was a combination of my my trust for wendy and randy uh, also their track record of uh, being able to provide a, a back office and a platform to build businesses throughout the world because they have an incredible track record. So their track record, my trust for them uh, and my love for them and, uh, and, and a cutting edge technology. So it was all that in combination. Now there's a huge unknown though. The product is not known. Janus was unknown. So but it was something that was here that we felt that I decided to move forward. So uh, nine years later, it speaks for itself. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying this, because a lot of times, Lynn, um, our human minds want to put words in certain things to make it right. What makes it all right is right here. So anyway, I hope I added more to that already. So. Oh, yes, that is a great answer. And uh, also, uh, I have a, a lot of friends that, uh, you know, I am in the business part. Uh, I, all my friends are architects or all my friends are business person. Uh, how do you attract uh, those people? You know, they are, they are having a very good life themselves or they have a very good business themselves. But how do you attract those person into the uh uh, networking business. So mm. I want to ask your idea about this. A lot of people well, might want to know. Yeah, I think network marketing um, is really one of the most misunderstood industry in the world uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, times have changed. Uh, how do we attract professionals into what we do? I, I, I believe it is just... You know, Lynn, people are attracted to it not because they're network marketing. They are attracted to it not because it's Jeunesse. They are attracted to it not because of serum or reserve. They are attracted to it because of you, of who you are. And so I guess when we share with people, I mean, we have uh, in the business uh, people from all walks of life, professionals, homemakers, uh, doctors, lawyers. I mean, all walks of life. I think the key thing to 
or the art of learning to communicate with our prospect is to instead of trying to recruit them, uh, like most people do, they get in the business, they're trying to get their friends into joining us, but more instead of put that recruiting mentality aside, but more of finding out what is it that they're looking for in life. Um, some of my friends may have a lot of money, may be very successful, but they lack time. They don't have time freedom. So, you know, I, I guess th there's, you know, there's the art of talking to your prospects, finding out from, instead of like so eager to wanting to recruit them. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would just scale back and say, you know, it's just, we're just another human being, you know, say, Hey, listen, you know, I, I know you're very successful. I know you do really well as an architect. You know, if money is not the issue or, or what, you know, or what do you want to do for the rest of your life? I mean, is architect a gig or is there something else that, that interests you? So I would use questions to find out what is it they want rather than here's a great company. You ought to join me, you know? So I would, you know, learn to ask questions, find out what is they want then maybe we have the solution, maybe not, you know, but I, that, that's what I would go by. Number one, number two, is that you, let, let's say, for example, Lynn, you, yourself an architect, and you're from an extremely wealthy family in Thailand. So you could tell your story why you're doing this, because, but we got to be willing to listen to their part first, then you share with them, listen, you know what, I know you're very successful. Um, so what you would do is you tell them your reason why you choose this platform. And, and I think that that's, that's how I've always done it. And uh, uh, that, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Thank you. And how about selling? You know, a lot of people sell, uh, a lot of people say they don't have uh, very good, uh, very good skills on, mm. on recruiting, but mm. they have a very good skill on selling. So how do you recommend those people that how do you sell when people say okay our product is expensive or they have an excuse on something so how do you uh, recommend them to say about uh, they have a very good skill on selling how do they do selling you know um, hmm. <laughs> that's interesting I think before I answer that question I think let's look at the opportunity Let's look at this whole opportunity. I am not in here to quote unquote, to sell something to anyone, but rather, I think if we just pick ourselves from this, this mold right now, let's look at the big picture. What are we, are we in Jeunesse to sell something? See, I have never ever from day one, when I joined this business, I have never ever looked at myself joining this to sell something because I never look at myself as a salesperson. I look at this. Now, obviously we got incredible products that we share with other people, people purchase, then you can, you can, people purchase and become a customer. However, I'm in the business as an entrepreneur to join this business platform, but not to sell something. I, I think there's a little of a mindset, uh, a, a little perception difference here of some people thinking about coming in and selling uh, stuff to people. I don't. I am in here to build a business, to build a brand uh, within a big brand. And so uh, am, am I making sense to you? I mean, because this whole, it's, it's a really a foreign concept to me. I didn't join Janess to sell anything. I saw Janess as a, it provides an incredible platform. It, it, let, let me put it this way. I, I do not know. I, I don't think Thailand has Amazon, but to our friends from different parts of the world, I, I use Amazon because it's such a huge thing. Um, I mean, Amazon, let's say, for example, it's a, it's a huge platform. There are people that go online, go to this Amazon platform to purchase. Um, there are those people that are looking for a job that, that go, go to Amazon and be a delivered driver. So they just joined the platform. So my, my whole concept of doing this business, that I joined a platform to, to build a brand, to build a business, and not as a salesperson. 
So this is a really a foreign subject, a concept to me, Lynn. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much of that also. I don't like to sell either. I want to tell people about my story. Okay, so uh, I have another question from a friend. Mm. And, and uh, she said, uh, what is the most difficulty in uh, driving yourself every day in uh, you know, doing MLM? What, what is the most challenging things to do this business? If I were to ask, let's say a restaurant, you know, I, I think like, this is, this is, you know, um, okay. I think the person that asks this question need to take off, you know, a tinted shade, you know, like all of us wearing around. We're looking at this this MLM. So we're seeing the opportunity not for what it really is. Network marketing is just as a real of a business as a restaurant. So if I would ask a restaurant owner, what's the most challenging thing running your restaurant or uh, running your spa or running anything? It is no different than any other business. Um, the toughest work, I would say, the work that we do, it's not physical. It is the toughest work is to face ourselves because in this business, and I'll tell you what is the toughest work. Okay. We all have an idea or thing you are got shattered that is the type of thing what do I mean by that I remember when I first got into the industry 20 some odd years ago I I was a hot executive I was a quit executive I was a vice president for this company and then I got I got unemployed I was downsized so now I've been I'm to my colleagues about something now here I was I had this idea of a successful executive now when people reject me and they label the work that i do the industry that i'm in that was the toughest part because it shattered my identity of who i thought i was so once we let go of that and 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 once we let go of that i think the person that asked that question they themselves don't have much confidence uh, or maybe they also have a, a tinted view of this industry. That's why that question came about. Um, so what is the toughest thing? I don't know. It's like life. Every day when you get up, what is the toughest thing? Or is, is, is there such a thing? So um, I think that the, this business to me, Lynn, it is a school of life with a compensation plan attached to it. Okay. So we get to work on ourselves and we get to grow as a human being to learn to, to overcome these inner dialogues of what people think we are, what people, how people look down, what we do, da -di -da -di -da. all those are constant mental chatterings out there that if we learn to just drop it all and say, you know what, what am I here to do? I am here to build a financial empire. I am here to build an international business, an international business organization. So when you are focused in that rather than all these other stuff, nothing, I mean, I really, if you look back nine years, we have challenges upon challenges, if I were to look at challenges, but I don't. We have a mission of building an international business. And so that's what we focus upon and not the other side, because the mind works like this. Either you focus one side or the other. So we I rather focus on the positive stuff uh, rather than dialing in, in in the other part of the mind mindset. So. Am I coming across OK, Lynn? I, I hope I'm I'm not getting too philosophical these days. No, no, not at all. You are answering very good question, very good answer. And uh, I. 
I also have uh, someone that they have a you know difficulty in their life. They might not have a, a good starting. Uh, they uh, for so to say, uh, they don't have they don't have money. Okay, how how do they? They want to successful in their life, but uh, they start off uh, not having that much money. So. How do you suggest when people like that that want to be successful in their life, but they don't have anything much to invest, like a like like a business owner, you know, they they have uh, have very less money. Uh, how how do they begin? How do they start so that they can survive? <laughs> so this, you know, yeah. There, there's a saying that if we keep doing. Whatever we've been doing, and we keep getting the same results, and we continue to do that, that's called insanity. <laughs> uh, meaning, if we don't make a change, nothing will change. So, let's say that those people that I really want to change my life, but I don't have money to start it, I would say, find a way. You know, I don't know. We, I mean, I've heard, I remember a couple of years ago when I first went to Thailand, um, and then later on I went back, I heard incredible touching, moving stories of this gentleman that, you know, he took his last monthly rent to put into Jeunesse because, you know, he's about to lose his house. But, you know, and he, he turned his life around. I, I don't know if this gentleman is still working uh, the platform. I hope he is. But so, I, I, and I've, I've, I've heard, I mean, I've met this individual in uh, Indonesia, same thing. He couldn't afford the opportunity. And he asked himself, if I don't give it a shot, I will never, I will never be able to change my circumstances. So he found a way, you know, I mean, you know, I don't want to give suggestions uh, that you don't pay your rent and then go join Janice. No, 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 no. When, you know, when someone want to change your life, they will find a way when they are. And, and, and with that, I'll, I'll give this story. Okay. And I told this story before and I heard it from Mr. Les Brown. You know, he told the story of there was a, a, a dog, you know, um, there was a little boy that he goes to school and every day he passed by the same porch. And then every day he passed by this porch, he saw a dog moaning and groaning every day. So finally, one day, weeks have gone by. One day, he walked up to the owner of walk up to the owner of the house, where he's sitting with his dog. He asked the the owner. He goes, "Sir, why is your dog moaning and groaning?" And the the man says, "You know why he's moaning and groaning? Because he's sitting on a rusted nail." So the little boy was surprised and said, "You know what? If he was sitting on a rusted nail, why wouldn't he just get up so it won't hurt him? So it won't hurt." The owner said, because it didn't hurt bad enough. So the point of that story is that when we are hurt bad enough, we'll find a way to do something. So whoever, you know, I tell you, people, they are over the last 20 years, okay, of being involved in this industry. I mean, we've probably heard all kinds of excuses. Oh, I really want to change my life. I really want to do this business, but I don't have time but I don't have money, but I don't like to sell, but I don't like to anyone. You know what? It's just because they haven't, two, two, two things. One is they haven't really heard what it really is, or two, they don't want it bad enough. So when someone want it bad enough, and I'm sure that you, in, within your organization, there are many people that have find, found ways to participate and that have worked on change your lives. So I, I think... Us, we don't have to find reason or explanation for them why or what they need to do. If they want to do something automatically, they want to do it. And not having us to say, to give them reasons or, or do this and do that. Thank you so much, Kim. And uh, I have a, another question about, uh, about the, the business also. Okay. Mm. And, uh, People have secrets on how they can do the business very great. So uh, they wanting to know uh, Kim's secret on uh, uh, building such a great business like it. What, what is actually your secret? Yes. My secret. Passion, hard work, and tenacity. 
Um, yeah, and heart, heart. Um, there's just really no secret. There, it, I am very passionate about the work that I do. Um, and I work hard. I'm a hard worker. And I'm, I'm very consistent. Uh, and tenacity, I think that's my trade. If I want to do something, I won't quit until I get it right. Just like this conference call, the whole time I was on the Zoom, I, people go, Kim, turn on your mic. I'm like, no, 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 my mic is on. So, I mean, 20 minutes after into the call, I was still on here. So tenacity, I won't give up. So I think in doing anything in life, and I hope people um, on this call, people will get it. And, 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 and so that whatever you choose to do, uh, love what you do and do what you love. So uh, that secret is that. I, I think people could, could sense it. I mean, now it's 10 o'clock at night in Los Angeles. I mean, look at this passion. Now you got me worked up like this. I can't go to sleep tonight. So uh, I, I think it's having a passion for what you do. And I absolutely love what I do. So that's my secret, passion. Wow. That is that has always been my idol. You know, you have always been my idol on doing this also. And, oh. uh, okay, uh, we are using a lot of your time. And I know that uh, it has been very difficult in the beginning of, of this uh, Zoom. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Yes. No worries. Um, no worries. And, and I, 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 I want to say this, um, Lynn, and I want to thank all of your team in Thailand and putting this together. Um, and to all our audiences out there, and I appreciate your love and you hanging on at this hour. And, and some of you just don't, don't give up uh, even 25 minutes into the call. Um, and I want to say this to all of you, that I am no different than anyone on this call. Look at me. I'm looking right into the camera. I hope you see, I hope you feel here. The reason I am where I am here today because of tenacity, hard work, passion, purpose. So wherever you are, wherever you are in your business, don't give up. If this is the platform you chose and if it feels right to you, you know, work it, work it. You know, the minute we, the minute we change our mindset, we change our thought, things around us begin to change. So I, I hope that it's, it's worth your wait. Uh, it certainly has been for me. Um, I, I am grateful to Janice. I'm grateful to everyone um, that are working hard. I am truly grateful and it humbles me as a human being. Uh, and, and, and what a blessing um, to be loved and, and uh, uh, to be working with people like yourself, Lynn, and to all the incredible leaders that are working hard every day. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, everybody, please, uh Give a very big hand applause to Kim Hui. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And uh, we are going to, uh, uh, you know, send this video to a lot of our people. And we are going to translate it in Thai. Because here we have a lot of people uh, wanting to listen to you. And we need translation. But uh, I cannot just uh, translate in between. It's going to take a lot of time. Yes. So uh, I will uh, go ahead and, and uh, translate it in Thai. Thank you so much to be with us. And... Uh, uh, is anybody here uh, before we leave uh, want to ask any question? Uh, uh, it, uh, we can we can answer the question. I can I have some question here too? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, let's look at into a few more minutes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, right here in uh, our participants, about nine hundred seventy-two people with us here now until now. So, uh, is there any question that one uh, pe uh, people want to ask? Uh, you can uh, raise your hand and ask your question here. Wow, okay. what a heart! <laughs> Yeah, and we have somebody just uh, uh, asked some question here. He said, how to keep the passion forever? 
how to keep <laughs> the passion forever. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll see you in Thailand. I'll see you in Bangkok. I'll be in Bangkok at, at the expo. So I hope that I get to meet all of you in the expo and uh, we'll talk more in expo, how to keep that passion. I am still learning. <laughs> Anyway, just love life, love life. Just live life and love life. Okay. Thank you very much, Kim. And good night. Uh, have a good very night. Good, good evening. Night. Have an incredible week. And I'll see you in the expo in Bangkok. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Good morning. Good night. And uh, uh, I hope everybody having a very good chat with Kim Hui and uh, we are having very, very personal question with Kim Hui and, and I believe that you will, you will be so happy and you'll be so glad to attend today's section because it's such a privilege to listen to something really out of her heart, out really from her heart. She just answered a question with all her heart right here. <clears throat> okay. okay. Okay, so we 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 end of this meeting yeah, because we takes about about almost everyone here about two hours. Okay. Yep. See you in expo. See